Okay, so the, the purpose of this video lecture is going to be to demonstrate a couple of, uh, of some of our intermediate skills that we're starting to pick up in the LabVIEW class. Um, specifically, we're going to work a little bit with some uh, prompting users for input using a little pop-up window, uh, displaying data in a pop-up window, uh, some simple Boolean case structures, and then use of a formula node. So let's go into a, a blank. I open up the LabVIEW splash screen here. I'm going to start a blank VI. I'll tile my windows with the simple control T. And in my class, one of the things that I make my students do is I always uh, double click here and I have them put their name on the front panel. Just allows for uh, easy grading purposes. Uh, kind of like writing your name on a sheet of paper, I guess is what it is. Uh, so I have them put the name. I'll have them put the date, uh, the project, I'm going to call this project the circle demo and then uh, the revision of the project and because this is the first stab at it we're taking we're going to call it revision one now one of the things you'll notice right away when you're working inside of uh, inside a lab view is that if you end up using a lot of pop-up windows it's kind of strange because you don't end up with a lot on your front panel we've gotten kind of used to doing everything on the front panel and having discrete items on the on the front panel, but this time we'll do it a little bit differently. We'll, uh, rather than having, you know, a multiplication node and a square node and all these different things, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to, I'm going to pull the data in and have the user input it. Um, and then we're going to run it through a formula node. So what we'll do is we'll start out on the block diagram. I kind of resized my front panel because I know I'm going to be working a lot more on the block diagram. Normally I'd have them half and half and control T would allow you to do that. Um, this particular case, what I'll do is on the block diagram, I'm going to right click and instead of going to structures, we're going to go to dialog and user interface. So that's right down here, dialog and user interface, and we're going to prompt the user for some inputs. So I'll prompt user for input, place that up here. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have the user select which calculation they want to perform. We're going to do some real quick circle calculations, uh, area and uh, circumference. So the, the, the most basic of uh, circle calculations is what we'll do. Um, so let's say uh, which uh, or select the calculation, the circle calculation to perform. Okay, and then over here, instead of doing a number, We'll create a checkbox, which will give you a Boolean. It'll be either on or it'll be off. We'll say area, or the second option will be circumference. And the neat thing about this is you could have 100 checkbox checkboxes in there. Um, you know, and you could look to make sure that they're only checking one checkbox. There's all kinds of things that we can do. Um, <clears throat> but we're going to prompt the user for, uh, for calculation. I'm going to change the window title, too. So that'll actually show... I might even say prompt the user for circle calculation, which is even better. Now that's placed in there. It looks great. And I can resize it a little bit if I'm not seeing my all my comments there. Now it looks great. And then what I'm going to do is, see I've got area and circumference coming out here. I'm going to use a case structure to determine whether or not they're pressing area or they're selecting circumference. Uh, so what I'll do, and, and just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, if I was to run this right now, it would prompt a pop up and it would say select the circle calculation to perform it hit area and it do nothing else why because we haven't created any other code um, but in this case what we'll do over here is we'll we'll right click and i want you to go in and grab a case structure so prompt user for input is where i'm going to get data from the user the case structure is going to allow me to create two separate cases it's going to allow me to create a formula for calculating area and a separate case or a formula for calculating circumference so I'll go in and I'll, and I'll use my case structure. You'll notice it gives you a little box, so you know you got to draw a box as soon as it comes up. And right now the input is, is Boolean. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wire up the area into there. And I'm going to cheat a little bit. You know, there, there'd be other ways to do this in the future. But for right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the true case is always an area calculation. And I'm going to tell you that the false case, I'm going to double click in here. I'm going to say this is always a circumference calculation. And the nice thing to watch in this video is I know I'm moving pretty fast, but you can feel free 
to uh, to pause it, go back and review a piece of it if uh, if I was moving too fast and you didn't get it. But the assumption I'm making here is they're going to select area or they're going to select circumference. If they select area, then it's going to go into the true case. If they don't select area, I'm going to assume that they selected circumference. I could build some error messages in here like um, if they select both, they pop up a message that says, please only select one. Or I could build another error message in there that says if they selected none of them, I could say, please try again or something like that. But for today, I'm going to assume that they can read directions and I don't want to get into all of the, the other cases that could happen. But for the area calculation, all we're going to do is we're going to come into this case now and we're going to put in the, the, uh, the formula node for area. Um, but before we do that, we're going to ask them, because there's only one, one thing we need to calculate area. Area of a circle is pi r squared. So to calculate area of a circle, what I'm going to do is I only have to ask them for one variable, and that's r. That's the radius of the circle. So because I'm in the area calculation, I'm going to right-click in here now. I'm going to dialog and user interface. I'm going to prompt the user for input. And I'm going to say area, please enter the radius of the circle. You know, you might even say uh, area calculation or something. So they know they're in area now. They know what they selected. Gives them a chance to back out if they didn't select it. They know what they're working with. And my number is going to be radius. Okay. So I, and I'll even change the window title to prompt user for radius. That's going to work great. Okay, so if they come into area, it goes into the true case, I prompt user for radius. Now I could I could make a copy of this, but we'll, we'll, we'll fill this one up first before we do any other stuff. Over here, I'm going to right click. I'm going to structures, and I want to create a formula node. So you see the little f of x means I can draw a formula node. And now on a formula node, what you do is there's some special script you can type in here. Um, there's both formula node script and there's math script. There's a couple different versions. Um, I'll show you, you know, one of the things you can do is you can go into a help, go to lab, you help. Uh, you can type in uh, formula node. And when you go to formula node, you can uh, go in here. And sometimes it, it helps and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you can go to formula nodes maybe. Let's see, formula node. So here it is, syntax, uh, loud functions. Let's see, what do we got? Okay, uh, and so what you can see is you can see how to do all these 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 functions. Let's say you're you're sending in a hundred uh, data points in here, and you want to know the min and max. You know, here they are. You know, if I've got two of them, I want to do another question remainder. I want to do a power. You know, all these different things I can do. Um, the power might come handy here because I know that the formula for uh, for uh, area is pi r squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that little help file open for a minute so I can go back and look at it. But what I really need to do is I need to define the input and the output of this formula note. So what I do is I right click on the left hand wall. I go to add input and I right click on the right hand wall and I go to add output. So you know this is an input because it's coming in on the left and you see the node there and it says input variable and here it says output variable. And here I'm going to call this, to keep my math simple, I'm going to call it R and this one I'm going to call A. So I've got an R and an A. Well, pretty easy. I'm going to wire up radius to R. And to A, I'm going to uh, you know, maybe display this message somewhere. We'll, we'll figure out how to do that in a second. Um, but first of all, anytime you're, def you're sending A somewhere, you're always going to start your formula node with A equals. The output is equal to some function of the input, the radius R. So I want to do pi R squared. Well, the neat thing about, uh, and you could look again at your formula node help files and stuff. The neat thing about pi is you can just equate pi. So that's pretty easy. Um, times r squared and let's go look at what the power function was there so power x y power of x computes x raised to the power of y 
Okay, so how, and instead of x, y, it's going to be r raised to the power of y, which is squared. And I do my double parentheses to close, and I put a semicolon at the end of the line. And that's, that's important to do. Let's see what we got. And, and yeah, it's working, so that's good. All right, so you can test it out and see that it's working. Everybody's happy. Um, the other thing you might be able to do is you might be able to come over here now and right click and do a dialog and user interface. And you could display a message. You know, the, uh, the area of the circle is, and this is where it could get a little bit tricky. Um, you know, in actuality, we might be better off not even showing this right now and just leaving it blank because we can also create a message here on the input side of this. So I'm going to drag this out a little bit. And what I would like to do uh, is is find a way to to uh, to kind of display a string here. So let's see if we've got a way to maybe take a number and and uh, and turn it into a string. Is there a conversion? Here's a conversion. Uh, let's see, Ch -ch 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 -ch. number two boolean array. Uh, Ch -ch 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 for unit string, string length, concatenate, string subset, string and number. Here we go. So we got <clears throat> number to decimal string. That sounds like a good a good version of this. So if you're if you're not sure how to use it, you can always go to Control H, and it tells you that uh, converts a number to a string. So I'm just going to take that number because I can see it's got something labeled number and I'm going to run that into my message. Let's just test it out. You know, let's say uh, uh, just real quick math here, you know, pi r squared. Uh, if we've got three is the radius times three. So that's your r squared. And we multiply that by pi, which is roughly 3.14. We would expect 28.26 approximately. So let's go in and run this and let's say area. We hit OK and we say the radius is 3. I hit OK and it tells me that the area is 28. Now I would also tell you that there are ways to concatenate strings together and you know and, and make that message so it would be area equals 28. I'm not going to go quite into that detail today. Um, uh, well we could look. Let's see it. Let's see if we've got so we've got concatenate strings. Let's just uh, Kind of like I kind of like making it even neater, you know. I wasn't intending on maybe going this far, uh, but concatenate strings. If you go into the help file here, it basically, uh, basically takes a bunch of strings and puts them together. That's what concatenate means. So we'll take this string and put it on the bottom, and we'll uh, right click here, and we'll go into the string and we'll create a string constant. And I'm going to say area is, and I'm going to leave a couple of spaces after it. And I think these will concatenate into one message. So let's try it and see what happens here. So I go play area. I hit OK. I put in a radius of 3. And it says area is 20. Now that's pretty darn cool. Okay, so now here's what I'm going to have you guys do. What you can do is you can copy all of this code in here. And you can go into the false case, and I want you to select the false case. I want you to put in the circumference equation. And remember, the circumference equation is 2 pi r. Um, so you're going to do the same things we just did in the area calculation, but I want you to do it for circumference. So that'll be your, uh, you know, 2 pi r is pretty easy, too. You know, if I was going to write in 2 pi r, um, you know, I could uh, just give you an example here. I'm not going to do it all for you right now, but... Um, if I went in and did my formula note here, I could say that uh, uh, circumference equals uh, 2 times pi times r semicolon. Okay, now it's going to give me an error right now because it, it hasn't defined those variables. That's because I don't have a C coming in. 
C coming out and R coming in in this formula node. So I would have to define those um, before it's going to take that error away. But this would be one of the ways you could do that equation nice and quick and easy. You know, you could test that equation to see if it's if it's actually good values there uh, um, and, and see if you're getting things out, check it on your calculator and so on and so forth. But always remember, you always have the help files that you can look at for all of these these uh, operations that you can do inside the formula node, and there's a ton of them. There are a ton of, uh, of, of formula nodes. And the thing about the formula node is the expressions in the formula node, like it says here, they're, they're similar to Microsoft Excel or MATLAB uh, or other text-based math, math languages like uh, Mathematica or Maple or other things like that. So, um, so that's going to be your, the rest of this will be kind of part of your homework uh, for the coming week. Uh, maybe take a look at this on, on Friday and run through this. And uh, best of luck. And, and you can email me any, any uh, questions that you have. And one thing, as usual, uh, I'll post this demo online so that you'll have it. Um, but as usual, as we always say, uh, we want to save. We want to save often. And we always want to save with that file name that we selected. So I'm going to call this Circle Demo 001. And I'll post that up on my.dunwoody so that you have a copy of that for yourself too. So best of luck. Thank you.